Good morning, Mountain Creek Christian Fellowship. We are welcoming you right now to worship, the continuation of worship for the words that God has for us to hear this morning. I'm so happy to be here. If you don't know me, um, I was a pastor at Mountain Creek for 11 years, and I miss you. I miss every single one of you. We're in a similar uh, size uh, and uh, church here, so the ministry is familiar, um, and I just, I miss you, and I thank uh, Deborah Davis-Bell for the opportunity to be able to to speak to you again this morning. I wanted to let you know that two weeks ago when I preached, uh, about 10 o'clock in the morning, we're an hour ahead of you down here, and about 10 o'clock in the morning when my church was gathering for prayer before the service, uh, Pastor Tom called me and, and put me on speaker and let me be in on it. And they pray for Mountain Creek as well. So this morning they did the same thing. And I just want to let you know that we at Grace Free Methodist Church here in Meridian, Idaho, are praying for Mountain Creek Christian Fellowship on a regular basis. So um, we even have the same mission statement, which is like super cool. So anyway, I just want to welcome you to worship here at Mountain Creek Christian Fellowship. and. Um, May God bless your your heart as you hear what he's laid on my heart to, to give to you. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for the opportunity that I get, even though I can't see their faces, I get to speak your word to these people that I love so much. I um, pray that you would anoint every single word that you've given me to um, give to these folks, and uh, we know that if your Holy Spirit does not anoint this message, that it will mean nothing, that it will fall to the floor, we'll forget it in two minutes, and if you do anoint it, supernatural things can happen through the spoken word, lives can be changed, and so we pray for that. Lord, I lift up Deborah and Daryl to you. I pray that Deborah, um, Deborah's body heals uh, quickly from the medical issues that she's facing. I pray that she would have rest and relaxation as well on this sabbatical. But God, just pour your spirit of blessing and comfort and healing over her and bless Daryl as he cares for her. We also want to lift up uh, Ukraine and all the terrible things that are going on over there. God, we just ask for your peace. We don't know... Uh, specifically as just ordinary people here. We don't know exactly how to pray, but we pray for the safety of our Christian brothers and sisters over there and the refugees as they're pouring out of that country. Would you give them safety and a haven? And God, would you just call uh, call down peace, we pray, and uh, give us opportunities as the days go by to help in, in some way, even being so far away. We give that to you. Now, God, um, bless the words that I'm about to uh, deliver and open the ears and the hearts of those uh, that can hear me, um, that they would take this in and that would be some little changes in life this week. God. We pray these things in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, are you comfortable? Um, got your coffee? Got your sweats on? I do. I just want to make sure you're comfortable. And uh, then I want to say, uh, how about spiritually? Are you spiritually comfortable? And you're probably already thinking, what in the world do you mean? What is, What even is spiritual comfort? Um, well, you know, it's, it's living the the Christian life, it's attending church every week and it's praying once in a while, but when you pray, you don't really want to get too crazy and and uh, seek God and what he would have for you to do to change your part of the world, but you pray occasionally. And when we sense that maybe he's calling us to do something, um, we put our hearing, our heart, our our sensibility to the Holy Spirit, we kind of put that on snooze and like, I can't hear you. You know, that is some uh, examples of spiritual comfort. And the goal in our lives most of the time is to stay comfortable, right? 
Well, what I know about Mountain Creek Christian Fellowship is that I'm probably preaching to the choir. I've always been amazed. I've always been grateful that the folks here get in and, and do the work that's around them for people in need. They're not afraid to get their hands dirty. They're not afraid to uh, go into places where God's love is needed to be shared. And I've always appreciated that about Mountain Creek. And But I also know that God is calling me out so I'm sure there are those that need to be challenged. Maybe there's those that need to be reminded that to remain in neutral spirituality is not where God wants us to stay. I was telling Susan and she gave me a half a day grace because I uh, had a sermon Wednesday evening, Thursday morning, like ready to go to the final draft. And I just didn't feel settled. And I'm like, God, don't do this to me. I don't like this last minute changes. But God wanted me to draw on my life right now and what I'm going through and what I'm doing to encourage others. So um, he has asked me to share about um, getting out of our spiritual comfort zones. The past six months or so, I've been challenged by God through other people to get out of my comfort zone, spiritually speaking. And there, with me, there's always this huge fear of failure. And there's, there's voices in my head that say, um, you're not qualified. I, I could never do that. But as I've prayed, God has slowly changed, changed me. And, and I want to reiterate that prayer, uh, what happens in prayer, God has a plan. But what happens when we go to him in prayer about these things is that he changes us. Prayer changes me. Okay, and so I gave him these last six months of prayer, and and um, God has slowly changed me. Like the voices now I'm hearing say, maybe I can do this. Maybe God will equip me as I plunge as I plunge in, as I take that leap of faith, as He's done every single other time that I've been obedient. There's a track record, but we still, at least for me, there's still fear. We still have to do it all over again every time he calls us to something scary. So I want to explore for a few minutes this morning the idea of leaving our spiritual comfort zone. People talk about comfort zones a lot, and we make valiant tries to get out of the zone sometimes, but I'm finding more and more that living for Jesus and making him known requires me to daily leave that spiritual comfort zone. We all have them. They might look a little different, but a lot of us live in them 24-7. So I want to ask you this morning, will you leave your spiritual comfort zone? Will you step out of your comfort zone for the sake of the Great Commission? And as a reminder, we find that in, in Matthew 28, uh, 16 to 20, where he says, go into all the world and make disciples and, and, and uh, you know, share the gospel with people. And then at the end, he says, and I will be with you always, even to the end of the earth. So will we leave? Will you step out of your comfort zone for the sake of the Great Commission? I want to look at two passages of scripture this morning, beginning with Jesus teaching his disciples about the fact that he has to leave them. And we find that in John chapter 14, and I'll read to you verses 12 to 18. Jesus says, very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do works, do the works that I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. And I will do what you ask in my name so that the Father may be glorified in the sun. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. If you love me, keep my commands. I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him or knows him, but you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. I'll explain a little more about why I chose that passage of scripture later in the message, but first I want to give you a definition of a spiritual comfort zone. A spiritual comfort zone is a state of spiritual behavior within which a believer seeks out to live their Christian life without the presence of any spiritual anxiety 
or conflict. They adopt a spiritually neutral condition by limiting their spiritual behavior to deliver a nondescript level of performance, usually without any sense of spiritual adventure. That definition, in my opinion, is really sad. The Christian life, in, we know this, we've experienced this. The Christian life um, uh, comes with uh, anxiety, sometimes conflict, sometimes a healthy tension, but a tension nonetheless. And we're to be obedient to God when he calls us to do stuff that we know we can't do on our own. So we don't own that anxiety when it comes. We don't own that conflict or that or that tension. We we um, give it back to God and obey, knowing what He said is true that He won't leave us or forsake us. So my first question would be this: What is your spiritual comfort zone? Those invisible barriers that make us feel safe. They make us feel uh, secure when we get used to something or or when we've done things a certain way for a particular uh, amount of time or when we just don't want something to change. Those are the times we find ourselves in a comfort zone. An example would be maybe I have a deep faith, but I choose to keep it to myself. Then, you know, I won't get ridiculed. I, I won't get rejected. I won't feel uncomfortable. So I'll just keep my faith to myself. That is my spiritual comfort zone. Or Oh, I totally believe in prayer, but but that's private. I won't enter into prayer with other people because, you know, I might sound funny, I might make a mistake or or whatever. Or for me personally, I like this time in my life. I can give as much or as little as I want, but don't ask me to do anything that might crowd my schedule, you know, retired schedule of hot tubbing and pool sitting and trips and all that. Don't ask me to do stuff that might disrupt this really fun part of my life. When comfort zones develop, they make us feel so secure that we never want to change the way that we do things. And often we're afraid of my, what might actually happen if we move out of our comfort zones. Most of the time, it's, it's just easier for us to keep doing the same thing over and over again than it is for us to allow change in our lives. Even when God is calling us to change, even when we know it's God's will that we initiate change, or when God is calling us to change in the church, we often um, choose the comfortable option. Have you ever done that? I certainly have chosen the safe option, you, you know, the, the option that says, I know in my head, because I read it in scripture, that God is bigger than this. And I know in my head that with God, all things are possible. I know that my God is a God of miracles. And, we, and then we go on to say, but just in case this situation is bigger than God, just in case I don't have enough faith. But just in case God hasn't has stopped working miracles, I'm going to stay in this comfort zone and take the option that seems safest to me. Can we just put Mr. Justin case to death? We don't need that. We don't need to come just in case, Justin. We know we're believers. We believe what is in scripture. Let's leave Justin behind. Do you ever find yourself settling for second best? Do you ever find yourself choosing the easy option, I have. What is it that stops you from living and serving as God would have you live and serve? So often we settle for something easy and routine instead of striving for the best of what God wants to give us. And I've been pretty careful over these last couple of years to not um, uh, cast judgment in this pandemic. It's uh, people... Uh, oh, losing family and friends and all this, just because you have a difference of opinion. I tried really hard not to do that, to uh, do what I feel convicted to do and let others do what they feel convicted to do and just pray and, and, and get along. But what I fear right now is that some people might, two years out, might be using COVID as a comfort zone. I, I've used it as an excuse time and you know here and there but when God's calling you to do oh no God I can't leave the house because of this pandemic 
I'm not asking you to do anything unsafe. I'm asking you to keep yourself healthy. But I also know that God is calling us. And sometimes it means to get out of the house. So I'm just sharing that as, as a possible. It could be possible that we're, some of us are, are using that. It's developed into a comfort zone, even though it's not comfortable. Deuteronomy 31.6 says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. Post that somewhere that you can see every day. This is said by Moses when he was ready to turn leadership over to Joshua. He's telling the Israelites that God will go uh, before them and he destroyed the nations before them. And he told them that they would take possession of the land. Or the land. He, he, he reassured them. But even so, this had to be terrifying. They were going to continue the journey with a change of leadership. And there was still a continued potential of danger all around them. We've all experienced this with leadership. Their comfort zone could have been in Moses' leadership. They were used to it. But God is calling them to something different. We have been called to trust God. We have been called to follow God. We have been told that he has promised in whatever circumstances we find ourselves that he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. Yet we find ourselves fenced in sometimes by our own boundaries. We hide in those comfort zones that we've allowed ourselves to fall deep into. We actually get trapped in our comfort zone. And in our comfort zone, we can choose to ignore God. It's easier to ignore God. We can hide ourselves so deep that we ignore our, and, and at some point we just stop hearing his voice. Have you put walls up? around your spiritual comfort zone. So even if you try to escape and try to do get out of it, there are barriers that prevent you from heading in the direction God is calling you. Has your comfort zone become an actual prison? What keeps us trapped, what keeps us unwilling to change is fear. What is keeping you from escaping your comfort zone? Is it the fear of the unknown? Is it fear of rejection? Huge with me. Fear of rejection, fear of something else. The good news is that we can step, we can leave the comfort zone and step into the destiny that God has planned for us. We can be part of the great adventure that God has planned for us. When we leave the spiritual comfort zone, when we leave the prison that we've created, when we leave behind the things that bind us and cage us, then we are in a place where we allow the Holy Spirit to fully work in us, and we allow the Holy Spirit to work through us. That brings me back to our text in, in John 14. Jesus is saying to his disciples, and I have to remind myself every time if, when he's talking to his disciples, he's talking to you and me. So he is saying to you and me that whoever believes in him will not only see the things they've seen Jesus doing on earth, the disciples back then actually saw him doing these miraculous wonders, but we get to read about it. So he's telling us that whoever believes will not only do the things that they've read about Jesus doing on earth, but they'll be able to do greater things because he's going to the Father and he's leaving us that oh so great gift of the Holy Spirit. He goes on to say, if you keep my commands, see, that tells me that there's no uh, option B here, right? If we say we love him, we must keep his commands. And to keep his commands is to leave the comfort zone and to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ everywhere. We need to leave the prisons of fear. We need to leave the prisons of failure and routine and assumptions and guilt. We need to leave our spiritual comfort zones and step into the life that God has called us to live. So where is your comfort zone? Where are you in this today? I really want us to look at our own spiritual life and figure out where we are in our spiritual walk. Are you stuck in the zone of the same old, same old, not venturing out in faith where God is calling you because of fear? Are you missing out on the blessings? Are you missing out on the abundant life that Jesus promised because you refuse to leave your comfort zone? 
for whatever reason. Throughout history, God has taken people out of their comfort zones. And in that process, he has uh, proven over and over that he is able to take care of us in the process. I will not leave you. I will not forsake you. I will not leave you as orphans. Matthew 14, uh, verses 27 to 31. This takes place when the disciples are in the boat to go to the other side of the lake. And Jesus was busy dismissing uh, the, the last crowd, the most recent crowd. Then the boat gets caught in this really big storm and the disciples get all freaked out. And, and then as if it wasn't enough, they see this guy walking to them on the water. And we pick right up, our text picks up right after they say, it's a ghost. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, which means he stopped looking at Jesus, and he started looking all around at all the dangers. When he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? I think Peter was pretty bold, okay? I was in one time. I was in <clears throat> a storm in a boat. And there is no way I would ever have considered standing up. I had people in the back of the boat say, come on, I was way up front. I was taking all these cold waves and I was like almost paralyzed. I had people in the back saying, come back here. We've got rain covering and all that stuff. And I was just too scared to move. So I wouldn't even consider standing up, let alone hopping out and trusting that I could walk on water. And we think, well, yeah, but it, he had Jesus right there. He knew that that was Jesus. He was right there. But remember our text, you'll do even greater things after I'm gone, because I'm giving you the Holy Spirit. I'm giving you God in you. God will guide us on this path that he has for us. God will guide and enable us to do every single thing that he's called us to do. Where he calls us, he will equip us. He will guide. He will enable. All it takes is a step of faith. And that step of faith then leads to blessing. And that step of faith and blessing could lead to changed lives. A step of faith that has made the impossible possible, a step of faith that has brought glory to God, a step of faith that leaves the comfort zone behind. Why do we have so much trouble? I ask myself this all the time. Why do I have so much trouble? Um, trusting that God will take care of every little detail of our lives. The same God that formed the universe and all that's in it. Why do I still have trouble with that? God is at work. He is operating right in front of us. God is doing things vital to our lives. God is at work in us. He's at work in me and he's at work in each one of you. In our families, in our church, in our community. God is at work. But some of us are so busy in our spiritual comfort zones that we don't see what he's doing. God's not doing anything. I can't see anything. And some of us are happy there because we don't necessarily want to see what he's doing, right? We're, we're the, to that level of fear. We don't want to see it. Why? Because we know that he wants us to be a part of what he's doing. And sometimes we just don't want to be interrupted. We don't want to get messy. We don't want to get our hands dirty, so to speak, with folks that God may be calling us to serve. We're afraid, and we think our comfort zone is safe. When are you going to leave that comfort zone? Is, is God calling you today to step out of it? Is God asking you to do greater things for him? Are you allowing the Holy Spirit room in your life to work? Are you hiding? And complaining that you aren't qualified or that you're not the man or the woman for the job. And you're thinking, God, somehow, maybe you got me mixed up with someone else. He knows how I am. What reason or excuse did you come up with in the hope that God will say, okay, I give up and just leave you in your spiritual comfort zone? 
Comfort zone Christianity is this, spiritual mediocrity that wallows in self. Ooh, that's an ouch. Going through the motions of serving God without risk or sense of adventure. Comfort zone Christians never experience the abundant life that Christ has promised us. Comfort zone Christians never fulfill what Jesus promised in our text in John 14, the promise of doing even greater things than he did as believers. So often we overlook these verses. We don't take these verses to heart. Jesus is saying what is expected of believers that follow him. We need to pay attention to these verses. We need to take them to heart. Maybe you've read verses many times and wonder, how can I possibly do greater things than Jesus did? And the answer is this. It's leaving your comfort zone and relying totally on the power of God in the form of the Holy Spirit. Does that sound scary? Does that sound dangerous? Does it sound like something you're willing to do? I think all of it. It sounds scary. It sounds dangerous. But it needs to be something that I'm willing to do because God has called me to do it and he's given me promises that he will be with me. Jesus cleared the temple. Some of you might remember that in the, in the New Testament. He held the religious leaders accountable for their action. Jesus looked beyond boundaries and reached out to those over and over and over again, those people that society rejected. Jesus was willing to touch and be touched by those with terrible diseases. Jesus reached out to folks whose society deemed unworthy of God's love. <clears throat> when all hope was gone, Jesus worked miracles. Jesus had the courage to face adversity. There was tension to say the least. He did things uh, against custom to help the less fortunate. He challenged the status quo over and over again in his time here on earth. But Jesus was on a mission and he was doing exactly what the father asked of him because he was obedient. He was able to influence those around him because he was doing exactly what the father had asked him to do. Are you willing to have a Jesus-like influence in the world around you? Are you willing to leave your comfort zone so that through the power of the Holy Spirit, you are able to do great things for God's kingdom? Or is your Christian life limited by your comfort zone? When Jesus told his disciples that he was leaving, but he was sending the comforter to replace him, he didn't mean that to sound like, okay, you'll be comfortable now because I'm leaving you the comfort. It, no, he didn't mean that we'd be comfortable in our service to him. In closing, I would ask you, will you leave your spiritual comfort zone? Will you identify it? <clears throat> will you accept that that's where you are? And then will you leave your spiritual comfort zone both personally and as a church? Are you willing to allow the presence and the influence of the Holy Spirit in your life to help you live totally by faith? We are called by God out of darkness into a light and life of his salvation for a purpose. And that purpose is to seek and to do the will of God. You don't have to figure it out. You don't have to have everything figured out and all the questions answered before you start living it. Walk by faith. Scripture says walk by faith, not by sight. Take a step of faith and see that God won't keep his promises. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Come on out. Step out of the boat. Let's pray. Oh, Father, it's so good to be able to um, receive the words that you would have me to deliver and the impact that they make on my life. <clears throat> as well as the potential impact they have to change lives of those hearing. I thank you for that. I thank you for the spoken word and how it's anointed by your spirit. It has supernatural power. Lord, I pray that we would take this week and really look at where we are. Um, 
what is our spiritual comfort zone? What are the barriers I put up? Why have I put up those barriers? Is it fear? Is it, you know, fear of failure, fear of rejection, all of that? What it is, and then seek you to have the faith to take the plunge, to stand up as Peter did in a big storm and be willing to step out of the boat. And then when we step out and take that leap of faith, may we not look around at the dangers. May we keep our eyes on you, knowing that what you say in scripture is true. You will never leave us even to the end of the age. Thank you for this time. Bless these folks. I pray in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. So a few reminders in closing. Uh, Going Deeper group is meeting today at uh, 1115. And that group discusses today's message. And you can ask for the link in the comments that you're seeing. If you have any other questions about times for stuff, what groups are being offered, um, any kind of questions like that, go to our website, which is www.mountainfreak.org. Pastor Daryl will be preaching next week and we'll be sharing the Lord's Supper together. So um, in, uh, in closing, I'd like to say to you, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. It's been a pleasure. God bless you.